Hi, I'm John for Gentleman and Whiskey. And if you're like me and like Weller Antique, but struggle to find it, I've got five alternatives for you to try. So I'm actually gonna pour up a little bit of Weller Antique here, just to, just to focus in on the profile. I have the five bottles next to me that I think are alternatives to it. If you can't find it, if you don't live in Ohio or Texas, apparently both of those places get ton of Weller. So if you don't live in those two places and you enjoy Weller Antique, I've got five alternatives. I think similar in profile should be available in a good amount of places. First, we're gonna kind of go through what the Weller profile is, and then I will tell you why I think these are alternatives. So cheers. The Weller profile to me is Definitely a lot of grape. Usually Buffalo Trace products have a lot of grape. I always attribute that to the yeast. I, I don't know if I'm right or not. I know that their mash bill is undisclosed as well. So it's weeded. We know that much. So all of these bourbons that we're gonna be talking about here are weeded. Uh, the one's not a bourbon, but it's a weeded whiskey. Grape, a lot of fruitiness. A little bit of cinnamon usually and some vanilla and a good amount of oak. I mean, Weller Antique is supposedly between six and eight years old. Get a, usually a little bit of just weeded funk on it. There's wheat to me is generally like a sweeter and then sometimes like mesquite breadiness, kind of like a, like a stone baked bread. There's usually a good amount of proof on the palate. I actually think it drinks a little bit hotter than 107. So there are a few whiskeys that are higher in proof than this on this list. Uh, it's usually got a great mouthfeel, good consistency, very thick coats your mouth. It's sweet, but not overly so. Definitely a lot of grape translates into the palate. With that being the profile, we're gonna talk about some alternatives and how they are similar to me. So the first bottle that I think is similar to Weller Antique is Maker's Cast Strength. So this is readily available. I honestly can't remember the last time I walked into a liquor store and this was not available. And this actually beat Weller Antique in a blind in our second episode of Shelf vs. Tater, which is absolutely crazy to me. I did not think either of these were the whiskeys that they were. So if you're interested in that, check it out above. Maker's Mark leans into the sweet. So brown sugars, some oak to it, a little bit of cherry, that kind of thing going on. It is generally not as fruity, but it's got some of the other elements of Weller that I really enjoy. And look, it's 45-ish dollars, should be between 45 and 50 bucks. So it is cheaper than Weller and more available. I don't know what's not to like. It is the most available comp to Weller Antique, and I don't know why more people aren't buying it. Makers can be a little divisive to people, but to me, it is a no-brainer. It's definitely one you want to have on your shelf, and it's pretty easy to attain. So that is number one. We're branching off into craft a little bit. Now, I don't particularly like this bottle. It's a little funky to me. Old Elk does some weird stuff with their mash bills, and they generally have a little bit more of a malted barley content and that tends to have a little bit of weird funkiness to it but there are people out there who absolutely love it they love the weeded mash bill this is actually a mix of weeded bourbon and uh wheat whiskey and it's about six to seven years old so this is the double wheat i think you could also do their weeded bourbon you know i've heard really good things i have not had an old elk product that i like yet but there are tons of people that I know who think that this is a Weller competitor, if not better than Weller. So if you don't have the same palate as me, and good chance you honestly don't, there's a lot of people who disagree with me in our community, and that's fine. We talk about a lot of different things. This to me is a little overpriced at hundred bucks, but that's about what the secondary on Weller is going for. At this point, these are still available. They are 2022 releases, but they're still trying to pedal them off. I've seen places where they're actually 80 bucks. Their store picks and their bourbon is not nearly that expensive. They're usually in the 70 to $80 range. So I think it's a good comparable whiskey. It is definitely sweet brown sugar, baking spices, and that's part of the Weller profile to me, but that is not necessarily the whole bit of it. But I think this is a good comparison. It's just not a comparison that I would pick over Weller. And I honestly wouldn't pick all of these over Weller, depending on the day, because I like Weller Antique a lot. It's my favorite of the Weller lineup that's not William LaRue Weller. So that is number two. Number three, Bardstown Origin Series. Newish release. 
They started releasing them last year to replace their Fusion series. This is the Bottle and Bond, so it is weeded. It is a weeded bourbon. I think it generally has a similar profile in that like with Weller, I get on the back end just a little pop of heat. This has that too. It's definitely brown sugar, oak, a little bit of fruit, but it's generally apricots, not necessarily grapes. So if you're the kind of discerning person that cares about that kind of thing, it is a little different. It's not a Weller clone, but it is close. I think it's a similar profile and I really do enjoy it. It's 45 to 50 bucks most places. I definitely spilled a little bit of my whiskey right there. It's 45 to 50 bucks most places and I think it's really enjoyable, especially if you can't find Weller Antique. So that is number three. Moving on to number four. I have talked about this bottle a good bit, and this is an unopened one, but we did have one for our 12 days of whiskey. This is Old Emmer Weeded. It is cast strength. This one I think is 59.1, so 118.2 proof. So it is a fair amount higher. They do have a 90 proofer, but I don't think that's honestly close. These are closer in price, and I think they're closer in profile. The Old Emmer Wheat had some like grape notes and then like a lot of like breadiness, like some honey wheat bread kind of thing. Definitely some honey. Definitely some vanillas, some caramels, just a little bit of like grape juice or like apple juice on the back end, a hint of fruit. And I think it's really honestly a great whiskey. I, after 12 days of whiskey, went out and bought another one. So that'll tell you how much I actually enjoyed it. These are a total wine, spirits direct. There are some that are good. There are some that are not good. This one I appreciate. I know it's probably not going to be for everyone. It is a little different of a profile. I don't want to say it's weird. It's just not necessarily what you straight up want to go for. The breadiness is probably not going to be for everyone. The honey and the fruitiness and a little bit of the brown sugar. And I think that is ultimately where it is comparable to Weller but it is a different animal altogether. It is the same price MSRP, assuming you can find Weller for MSRP. That is a good value. This has a little bit more proof and I think it drinks a little bit hotter, but not much. I really do think Weller 107 drinks more in the 110 to 115 range for most batches. Obviously you can't tell the batch off the bottle without reading the laser codes. So that is, I think, the fourth most comparable bottle and I really enjoy it. Mm. Man, Willer Antique is just so tasty. It's a shame you can't get it more often. So the final, and I think probably my favorite off this list that's not Weller, the final one that I think is comparable is a very surprising bottle. Now, I am just recently had this for the first time. I have a first impressions review of it coming out tomorrow. This is thanks to our friend Colin. This is uh, 77 Whiskey, the New York. It is a wheat whiskey at 110 proof, and it is amazing. It's got some deep chocolate, some baking spices, like some cinnamon, and then like a load of oak. It's eight years old, it's dark, it's $75, and it's great. I think this is comparable in that it's in that price range. It's definitely close. Like it's definitely got some different notes on the profile, but I think a lot of people are going to find those notes to be better notes. It drinks more like a bourbon than a wheat whiskey, but I think there's a lot of similarities between the two, and I think this bottle is fantastic. If you want to watch that review, it comes out at seven o'clock on Friday. Usually we do first impression Fridays. We do, do I like this on Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday for full length. So depending on when you watch this video, the review for this might already be live. It's going to be a first impression short where we generally try whiskey we've never tried before. If you like this content, please like and comment on this video. Tell us what you think your Weller alternatives are. I'm always interested to see. There's definitely craft whiskey out there, especially a bunch of weeded craft whiskey that I think could be comparable. So tell me what your Weller alternatives are. I'll give them a try and report back. Please subscribe if you haven't already, and we hope you'll join us in drinking like a gentleman. Cheers. I really should figure out what this old 70, 77 whiskey is.